Hey guys, it's Dr. Huntington here. In this video, let's cover the perfect diabetic breakfast. Now, in just about three minutes, I'll actually give you my favorite breakfast, which I eat to keep myself healthy, keep my blood sugar under, under control, and keep me feeling satisfied for four to five hours a day. But first, let's look at how each of these food groups actually affect blood sugar. All right, let's look at this graph. So what I've drawn up here for you is a graph which shows uh, rising blood sugar on this axis over time on this axis. And I'm, I'm covering three uh, foods, carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. Now specifically, when we talk carbohydrates, there's of course good carbs and bad carbs. We're talking the sweet carbohydrates. You know, your, your fruits, your cake, your candy, your waffles, your bread, your fruit juice, orange juice, those kinds of things. Now, when you eat those sweet carbohydrates, you get an immediate spike in your blood sugar. If you're diabetic and you monitor your blood sugar, you already know this. So you eat those foods and you get a spike. When that blood sugar rises, you then, of course, get an insulin spike to push that sugar out of the blood. As you know, that is something you want to avoid as a diabetic. Now, protein, on the other hand, I've got graphed here with the black line. And you'll notice that protein does raise blood sugar, but nowhere near as much as the sweet carbohydrates. Now, there's two things you've got to remember about protein. In order to get a graph that looks like this, in other words, not a large blood sugar spike when you eat protein, you've got to make sure that you eat a moderate amount of protein, because if you eat a lot of protein, then it'll spike your blood sugar. The other thing to know is that your protein cannot be eaten with sugar. And when, when I say sugar, I'm talking, of course, refined sugar. But more commonly, it's going to be with some of the other sweet carbohydrates, particularly bread. You know, think hamburger with a bun, a hot dog with a bun, uh, an egg sandwich, uh, all of those things, uh, uh, protein and a loaded potato. All those things are going to, you know, break down into sugar. And what happens is, is because you've now eaten sugar along with your protein, you don't get this effect. You actually get a spiking effect. Uh, so you're, you're losing the uh, advantage you have here of eating protein when you eat it with sugar. Now, the other uh, food here is fat. This blue line represents fat, and you can see fat does very little with regard to raising blood sugar. And that's a huge uh, advantage to know that when you're diabetic or concerned about uh, your blood sugar spiking with your meals. So a perfect breakfast for a diabetic would be one that provides the nutrition that you need to be healthy and create energy without spiking your blood sugar. Now, after looking at this graph, what can you eat for breakfast that will not spike your blood sugar? Well, it's not an English muffin or toast, and it's not the jelly that you might be putting on that toast. Those are both carbohydrates, and that, that turns into sugar and will, of course, raise your blood sugar when you eat it. It's not a Pop-Tart, it's not a pancake, a waffle, it's not a banana, it's not orange juice for that matter. They're all going to spike your blood sugar. So what should you eat? Well, if we look at this graph, it looks like we should be eating protein and fats. And in fact, eating protein and fats is not only diabetic friendly, but it's also a much more healthy choice than all the carbohydrates that most people are eating for breakfast. So with regard to protein, Remember, there's a couple important points. One of them is that you must eat a moderate amount of protein, because if you eat too much, you'll spike your blood sugar. It's an interesting characteristic about protein is that you, you can eat a moderate amount, but if you eat too much, it starts to raise that blood sugar quite a bit. Also, with proteins, you don't want to combine them with sugary carbs like French fries or bread. You know, think hamburgers in a bun or ketchup on your, uh, on your hot dog or hamburger. And you certainly don't want to drink a glass of orange juice with whatever protein you're having, because what's going to happen is not only the, the sugar from that orange juice is going to spike your blood sugar, but also now you've, you've ruined the protein because you ate it with sugar. So you want to make sure you eat a moderate amount of protein. And now on to fats. Now, if you look at this graph, it does not matter how much fat you eat. It's not going to raise your blood sugar very much at all. This is a wonderful thing because fat not only has this characteristic of not raising blood sugar, but it will also keep you feeling satisfied for a longer time. Now you might be thinking, well, you know, aren't, aren't I supposed to stay away from fats? 
You know, well, that's one of the food myths that has caused more chronic disease in the last 30 years than maybe just about any other food myth. The truth is, you need fat to be healthy. In fact, you'll die if you don't eat fat. You see, there's this thing called an essential fatty acid, which your body needs and you must consume through your diet. And there's also this thing called an essential amino acid, which is protein. And your body needs that and you must get it through the food that you eat. But there is no such thing as an essential carbohydrate. You actually don't need them to live. However, the good carbohydrates, mainly vegetables and berries, are a great source of vitamins and minerals and other phytonutrients that your body needs. So you should eat plenty of veggies, and you can have some berries as well. But you don't need, and, and really shouldn't eat, the sweet carbohydrates. You know, I'm talking about like the fruits, of course refined sugar, fruit juice, and, and all those grains or starchy vegetables that break down into sugar once they're inside your body. You know, like uh, cake, candy, waffles, pancakes, bread, pasta, just to name a few. Okay, so that leaves us with moderate amounts of protein, healthy fats, and vegetables. So, is my favorite breakfast, it's one egg, I like my egg scrambled, and half an avocado with a pinch of sea salt. So let's take a look here at, uh, at, at eggs. So here I've got some data here on eggs. One egg will contain six grams of protein. Protein's good. Four to five grams of fat well, with regards to blood sugar. Fat's good. And zero carbohydrates. And of course that means zero sugar. Now let's look down at our avocado. Half an avocado is gonna have two grams of protein. That'll work. 13 grams of fat. That'll work too. In fact, that's part of what's going to keep you satiated until your next meal. Eight grams of carbohydrates, but only two of those eight grams are going to be sugar. The avocado also has 20 vitamins and minerals, which includes potassium and magnesium. Those two minerals are extremely important, and avocados are loaded with them. So, now I don't eat this exact breakfast every morning, as I do like a little bit of variety but I probably eat it maybe two to three times a week because it's quick, it's easy, it's inexpensive, and I feel great until lunchtime. Now, if you're looking for a breakfast that won't give you blood sugar problems, give this one a try and let me know how it goes. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.